Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today's video, we're gonna do something a little different. Uh, many of you guys have asked about the music that I play on the channel, the uh, bluegrass and folk music that you hear. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of good comments, uh, a lot of pretty good jokes actually. Uh, I'm going to show you where that music comes from. We're gonna go down to my neighbor's house and uh, have a little discussion. I just like getting the getting the shots of you playing. Yeah, go ahead and play okay. some. <laughs> that was uh, Dick Johnson. Yeah. Born out from Pete Humphreys, 1990. Awesome. Pete from uh, Kanawha County. And uh, Brooke Smith remembered that tune. And uh, Charlie Bill Lemon remembered that tune from when they were kids. Well, everybody, I'm, I'm just down the road from our farm with my buddy Paul. And we like to refer to Paul as the resident historian. He's. Uh, he is the oracle of Red Tool House, the oracle of tango. <laughs> I, I do go on. <laughs> so, uh, Paul, you obviously have a banjo in your hand. Um, so the music that people are hearing on our channel is music you've so graciously allowed us to, to use. And uh, what's the name of your band? Born Old. Born Old. Yep, and uh, we uh, play music really from West Virginia and uh, uh, Doug, Doug Van Dunn is a fiddle player. He learned from a guy named Moe Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Doug's kind of got the, you know, the torch was passed to Doug. Okay. Uh, the torch wasn't passed to me, but I was paying attention. Right, I hear you. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, you know, I guess so, used to be so many older guys alive that, that could go here and play and visit them, you know, and I yeah. really miss them. Yeah. Pete Humphreys, Wilson Douglas, Frank George, uh, Elmer Bird. Um, there was a fiddle maker over Harold Burns mm. over uh, at uh, at the foot of the hill there at Samarco, and uh, whew, I'm just gonna leave out all kinds of names. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I'm back. Oh no, yeah, no, it's 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 great. I, I love the whole heritage element of that. I mean, I love the traditional sound. Um, we I was just one of the videos the other day had. Uh, had one of, um, I was playing one of your songs you were singing, and somebody commented and said, I know that guy, I love Paul, Paul's one of my favorite guys. <laughs> it, was, it was some lady, I didn't recognize her name, but uh, but she had commented, she obviously was from this area, so she she definitely uh, definitely picked up on uh, Now, some of the on ones we sing are like from the old 78 record right, yeah, time, yeah. but yeah, but yeah. the instrumentals are all pretty much from here, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Hey, here's another one from Pete, uh, Three Forks of Sandy.
<laughs> Man, that sounds good. The banjo really sounds good. It's a, this is a 1924 tubophone. I got the original resonator and then uh, uh, I wanted a friend of mine and to make me a neck and he just didn't have time and he recommended a guy in Vermont. Yeah. So a guy named Will Cedars Motion made this neck. And you see we got West Virginia here. Yeah, I saw that. Mother and then yeah. uh, up here we got Tango. <laughs> he, uh, he, the pot, the pot is a Vega and he was, he said I put Vega up there and the inlay looks like a Vega except for the West Virginia. But anyway, he said I can put Vega up there and I said, nah, and you put Tango? And he said, yeah, so <laughs> Tango it is. Excellent. Here's one, uh, this is from, uh, Ter Terry Vaughn, uh, Teddy or Terry Vaughn over in uh, Cross Lanes in Clay County. This one he learned uh, probably from Wilson Douglas. Mm. Old Joe Clark. So how long have you been playing? Well, first I want to start out by saying I didn't move here to play music. Mm -hmm. I just sort of ended up here. Marianne had some relatives here, and we came down. Her sister was here, and we came up from Florida. And uh, I got the idea there was this music here. While well, we came in 77, <laughs> shortly thereafter, I got the idea that there was this music here, but I didn't quite understand what it was. And then... Uh, in 83, I bought a guitar. I played a little bit, but my mother bought me, my mother sent me money for my 30th birthday, and I bought a guitar, and then started the flat pick. I was a terrible flat picker. Yeah. And uh, I was at a party, and there was a guy playing fiddle, and there was a guy playing guitar with him, and it was like, it was just so tasteful, that guitar playing and the backup mm -hmm. and the little, it was just so tasteful. I gotta learn how to do that. And then uh, I took lessons actually from uh, shortly thereafter from a guy named Robin Kessinger. Okay. Great guy. What a great guy. A world class musician. And I was just wasn't a very good band show player, uh, flat picker. But I kept going to the library and I would get these. Back then, the AV at the library was a bunch of vinyl with the jackets are gone. Is, is he too loud? No, she's out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she'll and, be out. The jackets are all gone, but by then I could tell that something was a fiddle tune, right? right yeah. Well, they were banjo records, and I'm listening to old. I'm listening to Paul Hammer banjo, and I like, I gotta learn how to do that. And meanwhile, I went to Vandalia, maybe '83, and there was, you know, Elmer Bird and uh, Charlie Loudermilk, and just all these great players. So Melvin Wine on the fiddle and. Uh, I gotta learn how to do that. And the, the wonderful thing about the music here is it's not written down. Yeah. Yeah. It's just in the air and you you wanna learn it, you just make it your business to learn it, it you know. On, I right. think it comes out of the ground somehow. <laughs> yeah, but, I like it. Yeah. But but uh but yeah, I just got it bad. Here's one from uh, I learned uh the old fashioned way from a cassette tape. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, from the late this is from the the late Frank George. I knew Frank, but I did, he didn't teach me this tune. But I I guess I stole it from him. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh other side of Jordan.
the name Born Old for the band. Well, you ever heard that expression? Yeah. Some of us born old. Born old. Like my older brother, bless his heart, he was born old. Yeah. And so we, we just, I don't know, that's sort of the idea. Yeah. But even though, even though neither of us are really, but it, that's, that's a, the idea yeah. that yeah. some, some of us born old. You guys may not realize it, but Paul's actually just 28. So he, he was born looking like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the music. I think it was born old. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Just, and that uh, sound transcends centuries. It's yeah. a lot of heritage to it. Yeah. And I love it. They'll, you hear field recording some of these old fiddlers, and they're playing like maybe uh, North Alaska. You yeah. Know, Johnny Horton. Yeah, Johnny Horton. Yeah. And it sounds like something from 1710, yeah. and it's North Alaska. Yeah. But anyway. That's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is a uh, this is Sleepy Eye John. From I learned this from Steve McComas. He just died uh, uh, last fall. He lived over at uh, West Hamlin, and he um, is one of my is a good fiddle player. One of my favorite kind of fiddlers. He, he was a bluegrasser, but his bow, his bow was like just traditional. And uh, the great, you know, uh, Kenny Bate or Curly Ray Klein, your great bluegrass fiddlers, all had that. And Steve. Uh, I went over there a couple of years ago, boy, I'm glad I did, and I learned this from him. So it's Sleepy Eye John, it's actually um, uh, Casey Jones and uh, Johnny Horton uh, in Nashville in the 50s took this melody and put some words to it and called it Sleepy Eye John. And uh, I think Steve learned this from Murdy Hall. And isn't this wonderful how messed up this all is? Yeah, <laughs> I love it's it, another, yeah. It's another... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Anyhow, sleep the eye jaw. To play what other instruments do you play i play fiddle though i've neglected it of late but i play fiddle and banjo backup guitar and uh and sing mm -hmm. and uh, i sing open letter and that's i open my mouth my letter fly <laughs> and so you also uh not only play instruments and, and sing but you dabble in luthiery as well right yeah i i repair and uh yeah i I traded for a fiddle, and the pegs were real loose. And then I figured out what was wrong and what needed done. And I, you know, I could it'd be a three hundred dollar job on a fifty dollar fiddle. Yeah. So I uh, just started doing it. And uh, I there's a an, a an excellent repairman in uh, Charleston, a guy named Early Vermillion. Early, I've known early for a long time. Marianne worked with his wife a long time ago, Marietta, and uh, Early's just so giving of his time, so I couldn't do any of this without Early. Well, let's go check out your shop if you don't mind. Yeah, yep, let's do it. Cool. Here, here's, this is just an example of the kind of stuff I like to work on. This, somebody had, had the screw in the neck to hold it onto the fiddle mm. because the button this is uh, the button of a violin. It's the most important part. Okay. And normally, get over here. Mm -hmm. The button, the button's one piece with the back. Yeah, I see. And uh -huh. it broke. That's a 
a, a broken button is a pretty uh, that's a pretty big deal. So I'm doing I'm doing and this is you know, this is what we call an old trap fiddle. And it's just you know, this was uh, made in Germany. Uh, I don't know, I'm guessing probably in the twenties. Hmm. It's uh that's a real bass bar, that's a good sign. And often they have uh, what is technically known as an integral bass bar. And all it is is a projection of the top, and you've got to shave them out and put one in. But anyway, the button broke, so I'm doing a button graft. Oh, wow. So this piece of maple, this is maple, mm -hmm. spruce, and the rest of this is maple. And um, and then I'll have to put some wood in here, to, you know, a piece of maple to fill that. Yeah. But the idea is it'll, uh, you know, it'll look like that. And then I'll get my neck on there. You know, it's, it takes a while. Yeah. But after I get the button on there, get the button graph done, I glue the back on. Then I got to take the uh, then I got to take the top off because it has a crack. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't look like much. But that really doesn't bother fiddlers. They just care about what something sounds like. Yeah. And uh, and then this top, like I have a, uh, I don't know, I can't think of what these are called. Is that a caliper? Me Thank you, to measure yeah. the thickness. Oh, wow. so, okay. So you come in here and, oh. and see it's showing me it's a little, it's like three and three quarters, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring it down. I'd bring them down like three and a half, three, something like that. And I have a little uh, finger plane. Yeah. And just thin it. And then then I tap tune the top. I have a, an old strobe tuner from, my, from like 1950. And uh, uh, if I remember correctly, with the bass bar, with no bass bar, you get them to E, and then they come up to D. I think that's how that works. I forget. But anyway, I uh, I, I get we're getting a little technical. But this is the kind of stuff I like to rebuild. No doubt. And so, then. So where did that where did that come from? That one. A friend of mine found it at a flea market. Okay. <laughs> for like nothing and he okay. buys them that's one of the part that's the first part of the guitar i put together and mm -hmm. and it's about 1900 and it originally had a metal tailpiece you can kind of see the outline mm -hmm. i made that bridge glued that bridge on there and then there's x bracing inside and uh this was a you know really good wood now, it had a rough life, and that pretty rough repair. I didn't do that, although I had to, I reinforce it. But um, this is from a factory, you know, hourly workers, probably yeah. 1900, and uh, probably sold in the catalog. Probably who knows what it cost? Two dollars maybe. Right. Yeah. Well. And uh, how's it sound? Strum? Is it in tune? Um. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. It does have a good sound to it, though. Wow. Yeah, and uh, the late great. It was a it used to be a banjo maker mm -hmm. in Elkview. Oh, oh yeah, Elkview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a guy named Rick Olson made this banjo. Yep, that's where I grew up. He made this. He made it's a tuba phone, and he made the the tone ring. He bought some steel uh, square rod, and he and he. You know, bent it, and then he drilled all the holes in it. <laughs> wow. And uh, he gave me this banjo okay. about 15 years ago. Yeah. And uh, West Virginia leg on the fretboard. Yeah. And and he did the carving on the neck. Yeah. Is that fret? Or here. There we go. Oh wow. And uh, very cool. This is a, a T I R Z, or a T E R Z Turs okay. guitar. Okay. And I think. I think in guitar orchestras, maybe they were played, they were tuned higher, maybe. Oh, yeah. Well. And there'd be a bunch of guitars, but this is just, let's see if it's in tune. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> 
sound but, great. Um, the depth, I'm surprised that the, the deepness of that sound was such a small body. And this was, uh, the way this was braced, it had uh, two, two little braces like this, and then it had a, a bridge plate. And, but it also at some point had had a tail for you. So I don't know hmm. what happened to this. Yeah. I don't know. And these holes, I didn't bother making them go away. I feel like that's part of the history of what happened to them. Yeah, no doubt. And it was, uh, when I got it, well, it's not mine. When the guy asked me to do it, repair it for him, the neck was sprung, the top was caved in. Oh, this is and, a uh, And the neck was bowed. And this is one that I straightened in the hot sun. Hmm. And then uh, we had to have some tuners fit for it. But uh belongs to a guy in Ohio. And... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah, really, yeah. Uh, but this is a TERS, T E R Z. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Um, with if you ever see, uh, there's uh, little videos of uh, Marty Robbins. Yeah. And he's always playing, a, it's a Martin he's playing, but he's yeah. always playing a little guitar. Yeah. Johnny Paycheck, he's playing a little guitar. Yeah. And they're, they're, and now I'm sure there's a tune standard. I don't know, uh, so what is the side? What's the side made out? That almost looks oak. That, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, it looks like white oak with the ray fleck in it. Yeah, and uh, there was a there was a crack in the back, and mm -hmm. I I took some sponges, got them not soaking wet but wet, mm -hmm. and then put them in like a bread bag and punched holes in the bag, and then uh, put that in another bag in the guitar and then put it in a garbage bag <laughs> and sealed it up so the so the back crack would close up. Yeah, get it to swell. Excellent. Yeah, and uh it probably worked it probably worked something up at the shop sometime, you know. Yeah. And uh but anyway, yeah this like this is a uh <laughs> I think it's an Imperial. Hmm. And uh, I, at first I thought it was a little kid's guitar. Yeah. But no, nah, it's uh, And this is 1890s, maybe? My goodness, yeah. yeah my friend R.D., this, um, he was in Florida at a yard sale, and this was laying on the floor under all the junk, and he said, what do you got on the fiddle? And the woman who didn't know anything about him yeah. says, that came from the high mountains of West Virginia. <laughs> she said it belonged to her neighbor's father. It's an old lady. So I'm yeah. assuming, you know, the guy was long gone. And it's a, probably was a, a started life as a stainer. This is original. Mm. This is probably uh, maybe 1830. But the top, the top came along later. Probably when all that damage happened, maybe the Civil War. I mean, yeah. I don't, you know, well, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but you can't. It's really probably impossible to pick it up. This peg box has been joined to the neck. It's like oh, a mortise peg box. Okay. Yeah. So that that dates it to 1800s, 1830s. Fiddles, violins used to have a slightly shorter scale, okay, and then at the time, they used to have a shorter neck, yeah. and they got longer neck and a mortise peg box as a sign of that, or sometimes they were made with a mortise peg box so people would think they were older, it was oh, okay. a sales thing, so yeah. who knows, <laughs> but it, it's, uh, I, love, I love playing it. And... Take us on, Paul, or something. Uh, the West Virginia National Anthem, Jimmy Johnson.
<laughs> Excellent. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And Delmer. And Delmer. Got to get your growl in there, didn't you? Well, I really appreciate Paul taking the time to sit down with me and uh, play some music and just talk about what he's got going on there, uh, taking me through his uh, repair shop there. Really neat stuff. So um, hopefully that answers the question you guys keep asking. Where does that music come from? Uh, right now, Paul doesn't have his music available for sale, but you can find him on SoundCloud. Just search Born Old on SoundCloud and you can see a good collection of his music. All right, take care, everybody.